بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم من بعد اي رحمه في الله continue on in our study of Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi alayhi rahmahu his treaties hadhi da'watuna wa aqidatuna we reached the portion of the treaties where the Imam said wa naqbul من كتب الفقه ومن كتب التفسير ومن قصص القديمة ومن سيرة النبوة نبوية إلا ما ثبت عن الله أو عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وليس معناه أن لا ننبذها أو نزعم أننا نستغني عنها بل نستفيد من استنباطات علمائنا الفقهاء وغيرهم ولكن لا لا نقل الحكم إلا بدليل صحيح. It's a very beautiful ibara and it's very important that we give the whole ibara because someone could take some of this and distort the meaning and this is why it's very important before we get into this that whenever translating from the speech of the ulama. Or even if you're speaking about someone, which we see happens left and right on the YouTube and other media uh, forms of media, that you have to be truthful, and you have to bring things in the context of their, depending on their uh, their background, you know, from their other speech. So, for example, if they say something which is mujmil or is very general and vague then bring some of their other speech if you want to understand what they meant by that some of their speech that's mufassal or that has uh, you know that it's detailed and explained in order to explain that especially this is important when you're talking about Ahl Sunnah because sometimes an, a, a scholar, an alim might make a ibarah which is very general which could it's muhtamil, it could have a bad meaning, it could have a good meaning or it could be a mistaken meaning and it could have a correct meaning because it's so general. But if you know this alim to be from Ahl Sunnah, and you know from other books and other speeches of this alim what he means by that, then you can give it the best interpretation. But if you don't have that, you don't know, and or it's a person from Ahl Bid'ah, then you give it the, the interpretation in accordance with their Aqidah and their Minhaj and their other statements. So that way you're, you're giving a truthful knuckle or a truthful uh, transmission of what a person is saying. So this is very important. So here's what Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al wadi said in this Ibarai. He said, and we don't accept from the books of fiqh and from the books of tafsir, meaning the explanation of the Qur'an, or, uh, and the, old, the books of stories, the old stories, qasas, and from the seerah, prophetic seerah, unless it is something affirmed from Allah or the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning that it has to have strong dalil from where it's coming from. But that does not, however, that does not mean that we throw away and that we, or that we claim that we are not in need of those books and material. Rather, we benefit from the istinbatat, the, uh, the way in which the scholars deduce a hukum from the nasus, from the text. This is what it means, istinbat, here. It means that, for example, if you have a, an ayat, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, waqimu salat, establish the prayer. The istinbat of that ayat is that the istinbat of a hukum, meaning that is the the ruling that is derived from that command from Allah. Allah said, establish the prayer. So the hukum that is taken from that is that prayer is wajib. That's the istinbat, how you look at that text, how you look at those evidences to bring a hukum. So he said, we benefit from the istanbatat of, of our scholars, the fuqaha, you know, the, the scholars of fiqh, like Imam Malik, 
uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, or Imam Ahmed, and other than them. Uh, he says, however, we do not make a hukum unless it has sound evidence. Dalil Sahih. So the Shaykh, uh, as with many of Ahl Hadith, especially with regards to their fiqh, they tend to be more uh, adhering to the literal interpretation and also they are very staunch with regards to the adilla. That, you know, where is your evidence for this hokum that you are saying? So then sometimes things may be controversial between some of the ulama. It depends how they're making their istinbat. And this may even be between ulama of Ahl Sunnah when it comes to issues of fit. That some may be more literal in taking their hukum from the Rasul, saying, okay, it, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said this, it means this, establish the prayer. That means prayer is watching. Whereas another scholar might look at the, uh, from Ahl Sunnah, might look at more the, uh, looking at the, the Adilla, of course, as well, or may see that Adilla as being sound when in fact the scholar of hadith might not find it to be sound. So these are some of the reasons for the differences in, in rulings and so forth about uh, various issues in fiqh. And it has to do with the soundness of the evidence. It also has to do with their, their methodology or minhaj of istanbat or their way of looking and deducing a hukum. Some scholars look more at the illa, they look more at the reason behind it and the hikmah and the wisdom behind uh, a verse or behind a uh, text of the sunnah. Where some, they don't look, they look less so at that, but they look more at the evidence itself and the literal interpretation. So these are various ways that the ulama of Ahl sunnah look at the evidence and understand the evidence and this will give us reasons for differing with regarding to different akam. Some of the things, other statements the Shaykh said with regards to this, with regards to the importance of looking to the dalil and the evidences and that accepting evidences and proofs from the Quran and the Sunnah, he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala يُخْذِ الدِّينِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَسُنَّةِ فَقَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتَ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَدَيْتُ لَكُمْ إِسْلَامَ دِينَ The Shaykh said, we take our religion from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And Allah the Almighty has said, this day I perfected, my, uh, perfected for you uh, your religion and completed my favor upon you and I am pleased for you with is uh, with Islam as your religion. And many, many ayats he also mentions where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem وَاَتَّبِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَا قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and follow what has been revealed to you from your Lord and do not follow other than that or other than than him take other oliya supporters and helpers uh, and very few very few of you are those people who remember or those people who who reflect letting us know that we need to follow the kitab and the sunnah and what was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's our success, that's the Sabeel Al-Mu'mineen. And not to follow the intellect and opinions of men that's not based on Dalil from the Quran and the Sunnah. So this brings up the next point the Shaykh also mentioned with regarding to fatwa. Uh, he brings some more uh, uh, ayats from the Quran. He says, uh, لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ يَقُولُ 
فبأي حديث بعد بعد الله وآياته يؤمنون. Where Allah subhanahu wa taala says, uh, then which speech after Allah and His ayats do you believe? Letting us know what believing in the Kitab wa Sunnah, following the Kitab wa Sunnah, that whatever we listen to, fatwa, opinions should be backed up by Dalil from the Quran and the Sunnah, what we're reading in books, and this is very important because so many people, they say, well, the Sheikh wrote this book. There's, this is a great book, we don't know who wrote it. This book about this, and there might be all kind of shirk even in it, because for a lot of average Muslims, they don't know, they don't even know maybe the difference between shirk and tawheed. They've been blinded by others. They've been, had their aqidah and their intellect altered because especially for a person to convert from, from disbelief, come to Islam into shirk and kufr, to becoming a secularist, to becoming a, uh, an extreme Sufi. You know, you left going to church and worshiping saints in the, in the Catholic uh, monastery or in the, in the church, in the Catholic church, and then now you come to sainthood in Islam, saying Saint so and so, saying Sheikh so and so, Abdul Qadir Jailani. We pray to him. We offer uh, dead sacrifices to him. Tijani said this. So and so said this. The Diobandi Sheikh said this. You know, and going to that which has no dalil, no authority from from uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to do as an act of worship or to follow. It has no relation to Islam. And so that's going to hamper your relationship with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of bringing you closer. Because what brings you closer is following Kitab al sunnah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem fi bi'ayi hadithim ba'dahu yu'minun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then what speech after it will you believe? Meaning after the Quran. What are you going to follow? What are you going to follow? What is there after the Quran that you will believe in. You can't say, oh, I believe in the Bible too. I, I use the Bible as my reference as well. I use the Torah that we have today uh, as a reference. No. The original Torah, the original Bible or Injil, yes. The original Psalms of David, yes. But we have those no longer. Those no longer exist and they have been abrogated. They're hukum ahkam by the Quran. So the Qur'an is what you must follow. The Qur'an and the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. يُؤْمِنُونَ After that, after this speech, meaning the Qur'an, then after, what will you follow? What is there to follow? What is there to follow after the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in Kitab Al-Kareem, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ يَهْدِي الَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَى Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in Kitab Al-Kareem, <clears throat> Verily, this Qur'an guides to that which is most just and right and gives glad tidings to the believers. That's the Qur'an, that's the Kitab Allah. And that's the Sunnah, sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ufi Sahih Muslim An Rafa'a Ibn Rafi' Anhu Atta Al-Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Faqal رجل جاء يسأل يسأل عن دينه فنزل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فعلمه مما علمه الله. A man came and this is in the Hadith in Sahih Muslim. Nairul Rafaa ibn Rafaa رضي الله تعالى عنه who said that a man came to the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم or that Rafaa he came to the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said uh, that a man came to ask about his religion. And so the Prophet وسلم, came and he then taught him what Allah taught him. Meaning the Messenger of Allah وسلم, taught the man what Allah taught him. وسلم. That's the way of knowledge. That's Ilm al Nafiya. Ilm al Nafiya is Kitab al Sunnah. It's the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's beneficial knowledge. That's the minhaj of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He didn't speak 
from his desires, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. But rather, he spoke from wahi. So the Prophet ﷺ, his ahadith, are a form of wahi. We follow the Quran and we follow the Sunnah. That's the asas. So everything else, all of these other books that we have here, they have to be, they are judged. Their authenticity is judged. And how we can practice them is how they conform to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in another hadith, في حديث عمرو بن عبسة رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه قال يا رسول الله علمني مما علمك الله وأجهله الحديث رواه مسلم. so in a hadith عمرو بن عبسة رضي الله تعالى عنه he came to the messenger of Allah and he said oh messenger of Allah teach me something that Allah has taught you. And in another hadith, in Sahih Bukhari, and the Nisa'a, فَلَنْ قُلْنَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ غَلَبَنَا عَلَيْكَ رِجَابٍ فَعَجْأَلْ لَنَا يَوْمٍ تَعَلَّمْنَا مِمَّا عَلَّمَكَ اللَّهِ So again, this ilm is from Allah. The knowledge is from the Qur'an. And the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was getting his his Sunnah was being uh, is is why, and it was formed, of course, from the Quran. It was coming from the Quran because it was it was why it was what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala revealed to him and instructed him to do. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in Sahih Al Bukhari, the women they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they asked. Showing the permissibility, of course, for women to ask for fatwa and to, to seek knowledge from the ulama. So they said, O Messenger of Allah, the men have overtaken us, meaning in their time, they've over, overcome us. They're, they're gaining all the benefits, all the ilm. Please make for us a day in which you will teach us what Allah has taught you. Because the sunnah is why it comes from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why we look at all, all our books, all of our fatawa, all of the things that we take from whoever, when they're speaking about the religion, that it has to go, uh, be in accordance with the deal from the Quran and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. وسلم